right, thank you everyone for checking this video out today. Today we're gonna to be going over navigating the Northern Colorado real estate market, specifically as a buyer. So this is a uh, home buying guide. I'm going to be doing uh, classes on this. If you wanna check it out on the link below, you can sign up on Eventbrite, zoom in for a class. And I'll be doing this every other week on Monday evenings. If that changes, I'll let you guys know. But uh, check check the Eventbrite link, and we'll be going over each and every, at least twice a month, every other week, discussing the real estate market in Northern Colorado and how it's changing and evolving and how you as a buyer can approach it and become a great buyer in Northern Colorado. So first off, I want to introduce myself. I'm Corey Frith. I'm a realtor here in Loveland, Colorado. This is my beautiful family here, uh, my wife and son. And I have been here based in Northern Colorado for, well, my entire career. But I did start in Denver for a couple of years, and I moved up to Loveland, Colorado. And I've been working here in Loveland, Colorado for uh, three, almost four years now in the real estate market. And even before that, I had actually worked for a builder in Northern Colorado. I worked for a builder, and we were based out of Loveland and Greeley and Severance. Uh, and so... I've been involved in real estate in Northern Colorado for more than just the seven years I've been licensed. It's really going back almost 10 years now in real estate. And so uh, I specialize, obviously, in new home sales. I have a background in that. I also have a background in construction. I help with fix and flip ideas and looking at the numbers and understanding what needs to be done to flip a home well. Uh, if you're a first time home buyer, I've helped a lot of first time home buyers, I've a lot of, helped a lot of move up home buyers. And then also, I've really helped a lot with downsizers, people who they've lived in their home 35, 40 years, all their kids have grown up and moved out, and they want to downsize something more easily manageable for them so that they can enjoy their home and not have to keep up with their home. And then also, a lot of times when they're downsizing, they're trying to move closer to relatives, grandkids, etc., cetera, uh, just to enjoy that part of life with them. I have been actively involved in the uh, Board of Realtors here in Northern Colorado with Loveland Birth and Association of Realtors. I'm part of the Government Affairs Committee. I'm a part of the Young Professionals Committee. I've also been a part of, in past years, been a part of the Loveland Chamber of Commerce. And then I am a member of a local church. So I'm very much involved in the community and what's happening in the community here, uh, not just with real estate. I've also had the privilege to coach some basketball locally. And I play basketball myself uh, two to three times a week. So uh, that's a little bit about me and my background. Uh, here's a little bit of my story. Again, I did start my career back in college. I worked through college at Costco in sales and marketing. Uh, went to school in Arizona. I grew up in Arizona. Moved here to Colorado in 2012. Met my wife and got married. And then we bought our first home. We first got married uh, in 2014. And then I worked in new home sales for a couple of years. Got my license. I've been in license, uh, licensed agent since 2017, and again, have lived here in Loveland, Colorado since 2020. And I want to give this a little background because even before I got my real estate license, I had purchased my first home when I first got married, and it really changed the entire trajectory of my family's financial stability and my financial well-being. And I really attribute that to buying that first home when we first got married. We literally bought the house a month before we got married. And since then, we've really been able to benefit. We've moved up in home and are living in a home that we would have not been able to purchase otherwise. And uh, it just, real estate for me personally has really changed a lot. So one of the first things you really want to work on here, uh, questions you need to ask yourself. There's five crucial questions that you need to ask yourself. And those are, are you ready to buy a home? And these, these are the five things. So. Do you have steady income? So most mortgages are going to say you're going to need two years of income proof to show, and they want to see it either at the same company or if you did switch companies, it needs to be in the same industry, like the same type of job that you've done for at least two years. There are loans available that will do less than two years. I know some lenders that can look at six months of income uh, for a specific job. They're going to want to see a larger amount of income uh, history than six months. But if you do have a career change, they might only need six months. You might have a little higher interest rate. There's a little bit more of a risk that they're, that they're taking on there because you are in a new job or a new industry. Uh, but 
and, and traditionally what we're looking at here, we want two years, the same job, in the same industry with consistent income. Uh, this And that's so that's the first two things. Do you have steady income? Have you been with the job for at least two years or in the industry for at least two years? And then the third question you need to ask yourself is, do you have enough for cash down? Do you have enough to put cash down and cover your closing costs? So a couple of numbers to be aware of up front. Earnest money. Earnest money is usually 1% of the list price. So if there's a house listed for $400,000, you're going to need to be ready to have $4,000 put down as earnest money towards the purchase of the home. It's a good faith down payment that is held by the title company, not by the seller, saying, hey, I am interested in your home. I'm making an offer. And to show how interested I am, I am putting this amount of money towards my purchase. And title is going to hold it. And title is going to hold it because if I back out for any a legitimate reason that's outside the contract, the seller could get that $4,000. So the other part is your down payment overall. So if you're doing almost no down payment, like using a Chaffa loan, an FHA backed mortgage, or maybe a VA loan, VA, you can have zero money down on the home. So that's something really important to remember, zero down on the home if you have a VA mortgage. Uh, the FHA, Chaffa, it can be as little as 3.5%, 5% down on the home. But you need to ask yourself, do I have enough 35 at least 5%? I would say with different closing costs, for instance, you're going to pay for an inspection. You're going to pay for the appraisal, moving costs. I would estimate that you want about at least 8% of the cost of the home to put to have available to help you with the transaction and to move. Now, the more you can put down, the lower your payment will be, and that's something you can work through those numbers as we get further along the road with a lender. A lender can really break down what those numbers would look like for you. But right now, that's what we want to look at is you probably want about 8 to 10% at least for the cost of the home to start. Again, that's flexible. There's situations that can vary on that. Again, if you have a VA mortgage, you don't have any down payment, but you still gonna have some closing costs. So that's nothing to be aware of. VA loan, you probably gonna want to have three to four percent of the purchase price uh, to cover closing costs and inspection and appraisals and things like that. Uh, you're gonna to want to be able to provide bank statements and two months of pay stubs. That's that's a fourth item. And then the last thing is you want to have low to medium debt. So you can't be maxed out on your credit cards, your auto loans, student loans, medical bills. You need to have those things under control. And as a general rule of thumb, if you want to have a, a credit score of around 680 or higher. Again, there are loan programs that can go all the way down to like 650 or 630, but your interest rate is going to jump up significantly. So 680 or higher credit score is what you want to shoot for. Obviously, the higher you go, you're going to have a better interest rate because you show a lower risk of default. So what's going on in today's housing market? Let's jump into that here. All right, so we're gonna quickly look here at the uh, stats for Larimer County. You see here we have 1,891 homes uh, for sale right now in the entire of Larimer County. And uh, that's down one and a half percent. New to market is down uh, over the last 30 days, 2.1% off the market. So that's homes that are either sold or pulled off the market. It's also down 2.6%. And days on market is at 73 days. So that is quite the increase. You know, a couple of years ago, we were looking at just a couple of days on market. And then uh, average home price is 752000 That has dropped a little bit from year over year, like tenth of a percent. Uh, and then the average sales price is actually up 5.5% at 5.4. So this is just a little bit of what Larimer County looks like. Sold in the last 90 days, 440 homes. 
And so 440 of the 459 homes have sold that were listed in the last day. So a lot of these bigger numbers, 1,800 is carrying over more than 30 days. And then here's a little bit of an idea of some of the recent homes that have sold. And if you want to take a deeper dive in looking at what's actually on the market today, come to one of my Monday evening online classes and we will go over what is on the market at that time and kind of break down some of those numbers and see what's happening there. And then also, we are going to look at Weld County. And if you want to look at any of these market reports, you can go to CoreyForthRealer.com and look them up there. This uh, Weld County has just almost identical numbers here. Um, 1,833 homes are for sale. That's down 4%. Uh, new to market is down 10%. Off market is actually up, so we're seeing more homes sold. And then days on market is at 78 compared to 73. And then the average list price is 618,000. The average sold price is 542. So a little bit of a lower price bracket in Weld County compared to Larimer County. And then here again is some examples of homes that are for sale in the area. Uh, I'd love to dive into more of these numbers and show you. So come to a Monday night class for that. All right. So the next step that we're going to look at here is getting pre-approved. I can't stress enough how important it is that this be one of your first steps. After we've already established the, the five principles we talked about earlier, the next thing you really need to do is to get pre-approved for a loan. That way we know for sure that you are ready to go on purchasing a home. And it's important that you work with somebody who really understands and knows not just the loan process, but how to do it in northern Colorado uh, because there's going to be different packages and plans in county to county, city to city, depending on what you're looking to do and what you're needing. And so there's a couple of really amazing lenders I recommend. They're going to be, again, below in the description. I'm going to have several lenders to choose from. But one of the lenders I recommend, Jamie Lasky with Guild Mortgage. She does a phenomenal job. So if you want to pause right here, write down her phone number, give her a call right now and start that process. If you felt like those things we talked about earlier with the income consistency and you have, you know, ten to fifteen thousand dollars saved uh, or available from a gift from a family member or something like that, go ahead and give Jamie a call, reach out to her or one of the other lenders below in the description and start this process. So what does it involve getting a loan pre-approval? It involves providing uh, detailed financial information, such as your income, your assets, any of your debts, and don't hide any of these things. Don't think, well, if I didn't provide it, because when they do the loan application process, they're going to have your social security, and they're going to pull a background, and they're going to find out from the credit bureaus all your debt and all your history. So don't think you're going to be sneaky and try to hide something, be upfront, be honest, because also a lender can help you walk through how to possibly fix or correct issues that you have on your credit score so that there's no big surprises that we find out halfway through purchasing a home and it's going to stop you from buying a home. You have to wait a couple of years. I had that happen once with some people I was working with. Um, another agent had handed them off to me to help them out. And so I came halfway through the process and quickly discovered by talking with them that they had had a uh, bankruptcy in their recent history. And the other, the other realtor and the other lender they were originally working with never discovered that, never helped them out. And here they had been out looking at homes with this other realtor for six, seven months, making offers, and they were not getting the offers. But even if they had gotten any of those offers, they would have been denied because of this credit issue. And so that's something really important you want to be aware of. Um, you want to be able to have your, uh, your business stuff ready, your pay stubs, bank statements, tax returns, proof of employment. And again, at least a 580 credit score. If you're in the 650s, it's better. So um, that's, that's really the first most important step we want to look at here. And then once you get your pre-approval, once we know, hey, we're good to go, we can go and look at homes in this price range, in this price point. Uh, next is your home search. So we put together, and, and you and I will sit down, and we will go over what it is exactly you want in a home. How many bedrooms do you need? How many bathrooms do you need? 
Uh, do you need an attached garage? Do you need a two-car garage? Do you need a shop? Uh, what's more important to be in the city or outside the city? Or is it a driving distance type of thing you need to be aware of? And so we will figure out those things. We'll put it together in a customized home search. So you get daily or instantly a home is listed that meets your, require, your uh, criteria. You will get an email. You'll get a message saying, hey, here's a home. It's ready. We can go look at it. It just took the market. It's those things we're going to figure out the location, the price, square footage, bedrooms, bathrooms, the style of home, what school district do you want to be in, and what other things are important to you. Do you need to be near family? Is there a, a parent you're helping take care of? Uh, do you have an older kid that's going to be going to school and you want to be within driving distance of school um, for college? Is there a job that you are starting or you have a job in an area you need to be within a good commuting distance from there? All these different factors. We'll sit down, we'll put it together, and we'll figure out where you should be looking and what kind of home best fits what you are looking for. And then the different ways we can search for that, we have the MLS. So the MLS is going to be the biggest area that we can pull. That's where all the realtors put homes for sale on. So that's going to be the biggest area where we're going to find homes. Now we can do an automated home search on the MLS. We can do it through my website, CoreyFirthRealtor.com. I even have an app that you can download and do home searches on and you start creating that criteria. So if you want to check out that app, go to my website. The link is on there as well. We can find homes through open houses. We can find uh, we can go look at model homes for new construction. New construction has a lot of amazing options and opportunities for financing and just having a new home with a great warranty. Uh, so that's something to look at. Uh, referrals. Does there, do we know anyone that's looking to sell? Maybe you have a family member or a coworker. We can be aware of that and see who is looking to move. Again, new home builders and then also for sale by owners. If you see a fire, for sale by owner sign anywhere, Give me a call. Say, hey, here's the address. Here's the phone number. that I saw this for sale by owner sign on the side of the road. And I will call. I'll reach out. We'll negotiate. I've done it before. It's not that complicated. It's a little extra paperwork for me because I'm helping all sides of the transaction. But we can still get you in that home if it's the right home for you. So those are the different ways we can look for a home and make it easy and accessible for you to find one quickly. And then we find a home. You're excited. This is an amazing, amazing house. I wonder what that white blank screen is right there. I'm going to have to look at the graphic. I think it didn't come through properly. But you find an amazing house. We're going to, you're going to fall in love with the home. Don't fall in love with the home too much because we got to make an offer, but it's the home that fits what you're looking for, fits what your needs are. You are going to need to have that earnest money. Again, 1% of the purchase price is standard amount for earnest money. Um, we're going to in, in the offer, we're going to tell them how much we're putting out for earnest money, what kind of a loan with how much down payment we're going to be making on the offer. We're going to go over important dates, like when do we need to review HOA documents and make sure the HOA documents are okay, that there's not something extremely weird in the HOA documents, like you can't have a large dog and you own a large dog. You know, Make sure those things are taken care of uh, with important dates. Also, make sure we have the dates in there for when the appraisal will be done. Make sure we have dates in there for when the inspection will be done. Um, and those dates are on the offer contract to show here is the plan of action to get through the different steps so that we can buy this house. We're telling that to the seller. And the sellers can come back and say, hey, we love these dates. These dates are fantastic. Or they may say, you know, some of these dates, we want to push them around, wiggle them around. It's not written in stone. It's negotiable. And even after you get under contract, those dates can still be moved depending on what's happening. If something weird is going on with an inspection and we need to bring in a contractor to look at something to figure out what's happening, we have flexibility with that. We're going to want to go over what's included with the home. You know, are these... Is, is the solar panels included with the home? Is that play set in the backyard included with the home? Uh, you know, is, is that shed on the side of the house included? Is the refrigerator included at the home? Some people always take the refrigerator with them, always take the washer and dryer with them. So we're going to want to go over the inclusions. What is actually staying and coming with the home? And then once we do all that, we make the offer. If the offer is accepted, or maybe we have a counter offer, or it will be declined. Those are the three things that can happen once we get to that point. Then your offer is accepted. 
It's fantastic. We're celebrating. We're yay, but we're only halfway there because we got to get through the offer period. And that is, you know, again, we got to go and drop off earnest money, actually, actually physically take the earnest money to title. Or actually, some title companies now have apps and you can make a direct deposit to them. But whatever it is, you got to make the deposit. Uh, we s- schedule inspection and appraisal. If there needs to be repairs, we're going to negotiate how those repairs are done. Uh, we got to make sure that you get good home insurance. Make sure you talk to the home insurance company. Usually, we will know this in advance, but just in case, if there, say the home is in a floodplain, insurance to come back super high because you have to get flood insurance. So different things like that. Uh, to make sure home insurance looks good. Finalize all the mortgage details. Make sure all the final documents, all the final numbers, and the lenders can send that to you for approval. Say, hey, here's what we're looking at. There's your final down payment, final closing costs, and final monthly payment uh, that you agree to. And then we do a final walkthrough, and we go to closing. And you sign all the documents, and you own a home. And so... We want to do want to go back here. So some of the closing costs breakdown. So you're aware again, property appraisal, home inspection. There could be a processing or underwriting fee, a lender fee, loan discount fees if you're buying down rates. There's going to be recording fees. These are all different title fees, uh, settlement fees for the officer, title insurance. So a title insurance, what that does, the title company is who is legally transferring the ownership from one person to another. We write up all the contracts, we do all the negotiations, the title actually executes those documents at closing, has everyone sign it, they notarize it, make sure everything is above board, that the people who are selling the home are actually the people who can sell the home, people buying the home are actually the people that are buying the home and have the money for it. So all those different things, title insurance is saying, hey, so-and-so so, you know, was the brother that owned the property, he didn't agree to sell the house. He still has ownership because he didn't sign anything to sell the house. Title insurance is to say, you know what? We should have caught that in our due diligence to know who owned this property, who was involved, and had everyone sign and agree to it. And since that didn't happen, title insurance is going to have to resolve that. Um, so that's why you have title insurance. Document preparation fees, ESCO, taxes, insurance, prepaid credit costs. These are all potential these potential closing costs, they vary from deal to deal, contract to contract, and it also varies based off a negotiation of who pays for closing costs. All of these items are actually laid out in the contract. Not all of these. A lot of these items are laid out in the contract. And the loan ones aren't so much. Uh, but it's all negotiable of who's going to pay what. And that's when you can go to the seller and have the seller pay closing costs up to X amount. Um, the restrictions that are going to be on how much a seller can pay in closing costs are actually set by the lender because there's certain rules where the lender has to have X amount of dollars actually invested by the buyer because you're the one buying the house and you have to be invested in the home. So those are different closing costs uh, there. And then we have closing day. Uh, this is the big day. I'll be there with you. Usually our lender will be there with you too at closing even though they've probably signed everything it's all done. Before then, uh, you're going to want to make sure you bring any identification you have. So, again, we can verify who you are. <laughs> and also, title can properly uh, put under whose name either the seller buy is happening. Um, everyone who purchased the property must be present. Um, again, if this is not possible in advance, let me know because we can have remote notaries, uh, but there's some extra steps, costs, and, and things involved with that. You need to bring either a certified check or wire the funds that you need for closing costs and down payment. And congratulations, you have now owned a home. That is the process of buying a house. Uh, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative and helped you understand the process of buying a home and how do you buy a home. Uh, then again, this is for Colorado. This is where I'm licensed is in Colorado. It's going to vary a little bit state to state. But this is the process here in Colorado. If you are looking to purchase, please feel free to reach out. I'd love to chat with you. And if you want to come to any of my online Zoom classes where I go over this material and we dive in a little deeper on individual homes and breaking down different 
uh, just different layouts, different pricing structures, and looking at actual numbers of things to answer questions of like, well, can I actually afford this, and what does it look like, and how can I do it? Uh, Monday afternoons, again, check the link for my Zoom Eventbrite, and love to answer any questions you have there. If you're watching this and you don't live in Colorado, don't worry. I work with an amazing group of realtors. We are nationwide. So reach out, let me know, and I will connect you with a realtor who can walk you through this step-by-step -step in your state where you live. So love to help you out with that too. Home ownership opens up so many different opportunities for people. It is the greatest wealth builder we have, and we can't let that be taken away from us. And the best way to fight against having it taken away from us is going out and buying, buying your home. Buy your property. Don't be a renter for life. Uh, it is life-changing to own a home, and this is how you do it. So thank you again for watching. Uh, subscribe and follow for more as I show uh, different neighborhoods in northern Colorado, different new home build communities, and explore what is happening in beautiful state of Colorado. I'm Corey Frith, again with EXP Realty. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and follow for more.